in the previous session, you know, Sharmila Didi took us to understand what is essentially required to ensure the harmony in the society. And in this session, basically, you know, lecture number 18, which talks about how to realize the goal. So lecture 17 focus on what is the goal? What is the human goal? And what do we need to do <clears throat> to realize harmony in the society? And this lecture focuses on how we can do it. I hope all have come back from the short break. Let's indicate your readiness in the chat saying yes. Are you there? Have you come back? Can we start? Nice. All have come back, all are ready. So, This is the human goal we talked about in the first session. The right understanding and right feelings in every individual. Now let us ask this question to ourselves, how this right understanding and right feelings can be ensured in every individual? The answer comes education. The inputs, the understanding. And with such education, with such input, which are harmonious, the harmonious sanskar will get developed in every individual. So when we say every individual, there are five individuals in a family. So all of those five individuals in that family. So each of the member would be able to have this clarity that physical facility is not essentially required to ensure resolution and happiness within. But physical facility is the need of the body. The physical facility is required to ensure the health of the body. So the family together would be able to do the correct assessment of the required physical facilities. And as you know, Seema Didi was talking in the break that when you open the refrigerator, you know, you get to see that there are more than required things. So that is what the prosperity is. And with such feeling, you know, we start off doing the right utilization of the physical facilities. So we, we start investing these physical facilities for right understanding and right feelings, for fulfilling our relationship. And that is what the prosperity is, but that is the outcome of having this right understanding and right feelings with them. So all the members of a family, you know, able to ensure this right understanding and right feelings, which means the trust is being ensured. So similarly, the trust will be ensured in the, in the society. And then, you know, with this right understanding that human being is a part of the nature, and rest of the three orders are already in harmony, interconnected and mutual fulfillment is there. And, you know, fulfilling, fulfilling their relationship with each of them, you know, they are getting enriched. So that enrichment, that mutual fulfillment, that mutual connectedness, interrelatedness, that cyclic relationship. And we also have natural acceptance for it which results into you know, living with mutual fulfillment, the coexistence. So what is the most important is right understanding, right feeling. And that is what we are trying to do in this, till the journey today, you know, through this UHU courses. We are trying to ensure this right understanding and right feelings within us so that our right sanskar will develop. So education, which means any input, but when it comes to accepting the inputs for the verification within, with the clarity of the purpose, the continuous happiness and prosperity, 
then the education you know we can have this definition that education is to develop the right understanding of harmony at all the four levels of my being starting from myself to the entire existence so the more and more i get exposed exposed to the content of harmony starting from myself to the whole existence and the more and more i get involved into the process of self exploration self awareness and the self evaluation within this two things together would develop the sanskar so sanskar is basically the practice preparation and the commitment of living and we are living at all these four <clears throat> you know being starting from individual to the uh, entire existence so all these four levels so education is developing right understanding and right feelings and sanskar is the commitment practice and the preparation of right living so this much you know we have talked about till the last previous session and we are exploring it within ourselves too do we have any uh, poll bhaiya here okay so let us understand the process of development the process of educating ourselves to develop i remember uh, you know after the first introductory workshop of uh, minu ji and mohan bhaiya you know, both of them are coming they come from the same institute and uh, you know they had this first uh workshop introductory workshop and uh, i guess after 15 20 days i was i mean i was talking to both of them and they said we don't know things have changed things are changing one of the thing that we could observe that we started calling each other as didi and bhaiya <laughs> so that was like the impact of being in the workshop we imitated the things there is also possibility that you know you must have started imitating the things from the workshop the way of talking the way of you know interacting with each other the vocabulary the words must have changed has this things has happened with you also you can respond in the chat chat box has it happened is it happening with you that whenever you remain in the workshop you are in the trance of workshop during the workshop and after the workshop for the few days it's happening nice it's happening it's happened certainly these are all you know sometimes you know you know we we each one of us is able to see to it so what does it means it means that the development process starts with imitating the things and whatever we could imitate it you know we we try to follow it so saying didi bhaiya or you know possibly uh, saying namaste started saying vanakkam right these are some changes so what like i wanted to draw an attention that the process of development starts with imitation and whatever we could imitate we follow it and with that following the things we try to discipline ourselves so after the workshop in the follow up meetings uh, many of you have seen that uh, you know your time management has become more uh, better than getting exposure to the uhv or Uh, the way you are conducting classes with your students has also changing and changed after the exposure to the uhv so with whatever we follow you know we try to discipline ourselves and then as we understand i mean initially we just assume right whatever has been said in the workshops are okay and these are very interesting thing these are very important things and with this i could change the whole world now 
and we remain in that trance for one workshop for months, maybe for a year, unless we get into the exploration within. But the real journey of the development starts with exploring the things within. And as we could verify all of these proposals within ourselves, you know, with that, with that verification, this understanding gets developed, which reflects into our thoughts and which you know, reflects into our behavior. So through that process of self-verification, you know, we can be into a self-discipline mode, the self-confidence, doing the right evaluation of ourselves. And with that self-confidence, which comes on the basis of knowing the thing and not by assuming the things, we, our sanskar get develops and accordingly, you know, we live. So we live with harmony within. We also participate in ensuring harmony in the family, harmony in the society, harmony in the nature and ecosystem. So when we see this process of development, it's like this at any age, even at this age also we imitate, we follow from discipline to the self-discipline. You know, self-discipline and self-confidence through knowing within, through the process of exploration, which reflects into our you know, behavior, our understanding and our thoughts. The same thing is happening with you. Is the same thing happens with you? It's happening with you. You can respond in the chat box, yes, no. Right. So it's so simple to understand the process of development. If this is the process of development, then you know we want to develop ourselves, we want to develop our children, we want to develop our students, and we also want to develop our friends and our relatives. Now, what if the same process for them also? The children also start imitating the things. So whatever they see around, you know, in the family, they start imitating. They they follow it. And each one of us is able to see that, like whatever we do in the home, our children mostly doing the same things. For example, our habit of playing with the uh, remaining most of the times with the cell phones, sometimes you know, we are using the cell phones for gaming the things or for, uh, you know, uh, we remain on the social network for most of the time. Or, you know, we get irritated or sometimes we throw the things, sometimes we lie, though we do not want to. But if you want to avoid someone, you know, in front of the children, you say that, you know, pick up the call and say that I'm not at home, right? So many things. So whatever I exhibiting through my behavior and whatever we are exhibiting through our behavior in the family, the children have the same thing to imitate and follow. Similarly, the classroom, the students is imitating me knowingly or unknowingly as I imitate others. And what happens, you know, generally, when we look into the competency of the other, and based on their competency, we evaluate whether the other is good, other is not good, shall I, shall I accept, reject the other, same thing is happening with the children and with the students also. You know, when they verify within themselves, and if their, their image, the desirable image, and whatever our image is not matching with each other, then they find it very difficult to accept us. And the same thing is happening in the family. Our own children sometimes find difficult to accept us. Our students also, you know, find it difficult to accept us. That is the cause of all this, you know, struggle in the family, struggle in the classroom. Normally we call it as a generation gap, but this is a generation gap or this is, you know, we are not able to 
produce that conducive environment for the development. Because I myself is confused within what I think, what I say, and what I do are totally different. So unless you know these things matches, that what I desire to be and what I think and what I do, all these three things are aligned with each other. I may not be able to produce, create that conducive environment for the others. You know, they are imitating and to follow. So this is, you know, the thing. So if through process of self-exploration within, if we keep working on our own self, which is actually going to reflect into our behavior, then we can be a sort of role models. And the children at our home, students in the classroom, our friends and relatives, you know, they are going to imitate. So this is what basically the process of development. So if we have this content of understanding and the process of understanding and the efforts to live in harmony at family level, at school level, at university level, and at society at large. This will have a conducive environment. And in such conducive environment, this right sanskar you know, would develop. And that would lead to the harmonious society. So that's the reason, you know, the value education holds a higher priority over the skill education. So if you have this value education for ourselves, if we have this value education in family, in the schools, in the colleges, in the university, so a child who is anyway investing minimum 15 to 20 years in education, and during this time of education, you know, the child will be able to develop this right understanding and right feelings within himself or herself, which will lead to have a self-discipline and the self-confidence, which means a harmonious life. But what is happening today? Because, you know, the, like Shashikan Bhaiya was talking about the population, the growing population. So what do you think that the growing population is a problem or the population without right understanding is a problem? I mean, just start having some visualization on this thought that all the, if, you know, all this population starts living with the right understanding and right feelings. So problem today is our assumptions. The problem today is with that assumptions, we have created our empires. And whenever he's, you know, there as a part of our empire, he's imitating the same thing. And that is the reason, you know, we are able to see that my grandfather had a very comfortable life than my father. My grandfather was a very relaxed person. Easily he used to mingle with the others. You know, he used to go to the neighbor's farm also to help you know, in the, the cultivation things, in cutting crops. They never used to come to my grandfather to cut the crops. The physical facilities were adequate, but the relaxation, the bonding, the attachment. We never had a family wedding. It was always a village wedding. So all the family in the villages used to, you know, come together to make that wedding successful, to be the host of that wedding. And each one of us has seen these things. But now we are, have developed these assumptions through the input of input, you know, which is coming through the modern education that money is everything, human being is a body, 
and whatever we you know you could do to fulfill this sensual pleasure you will be happy so under this things you know we are we have created and we are creating the environment to imitate so the individual struggle the conflict in the families the the fights and the war in the society and the environmental issues so all these things are increasing upon so are you able to see that with the growing number of schools and the colleges with the growing number of <laughs> people who are going through the process of education the problems at individual to the existence level you know are also increasing upon so are we developing what you think are we developing if anybody has inputs or question can raise the hand just nachiketa ji ah uh, umesh ji namaste 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 uh, namaste very happy to see you once again <laughs> so actually in previous two slides you have mentioned that uh, the next generation is uh, more developed and in another slide the next generation is uh, less developed so these were two assumptions uh, these were two assumptions uh, that we will be making in our mind if, when we will assume that the next generation is less developed than us then it will lead to conflicts and it will more developed than us so i could not uh, understand that but what is actually that those things yeah let us see some basic things what is meant by development right so, so the development would means if i am you know developing with the ability to remain in harmony with it if you know in the family we want we, each one of us wants to live nicely with each other with that feeling of relationship if it is increasing development is happening if i am able to ensure the health of my body development is happening if there is harmony in the society you know increasing development is happening if we are able to see our relatedness connectedness with the nature development is happening so development would means providing resolution to the expanse of my living starting from myself to the entire nature and the source and the existence if it is happening i am developing if it is happening other way around that in individual mental trauma conflict the anxiety depression suicidal thoughts suicide addiction to the substance the conflict in the family the struggle in the society if all these things are increasing then we can think about it whether are we developing or we are not developing. okay uh, yes uh, yes oh uh, mehz uh, thank you <laughs> so so what do you think are we developing uh, no 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 we're very right very right but the assumptions are uh, actually wrong because we cannot conclude that the next generation is more developed or less developed what is more important is we must see the development if it is bringing happiness and it is based upon right understanding that is what is more important thank you thank you ek thank you anybody else would like to reflect upon or have any question yes sadan kumar bhaiya yes sir <clears throat> yeah there is also a poll on the screen you can okay. respond Okay, sir. Yes. Let me respond. Yes, sir. Thank you for uh, such an insightful talk and introductory note uh, on your part. Uh, yes, uh, what was uh, was the question of uh, Nuchiketa sir over here just minutes ago? Actually, you have already pointed out that there can be two possibilities. one possibility is 
that we are thinking development under the environment of relationship that is highlighted over here on the screen also. And the second that we think that uh, that is domination, if the environment is of domination, then there is high chance that we are moving towards some other thing. That means that is not the desirable in our society. So really it's a, a nice uh, review of whatever we have done in the morning that if we are following this environment of domination, we won't be going you know, anywhere. That means we would again be problem oriented and we would be thinking of piecemeal solution only as uh, Shoshi uh, sir has already referred to the problem of population. Now, if we think it's population, then there may be you know, thought of problem. But if we think that they are our relatives, then we can create the environment of relationship as Umesh sir has already identified clearly that that may lead to development in the real sense, in the truest sense of the term. Thank you, sir. Very insightful. All right, thank you. Anybody else wants to reflect or have a question? Each one of us, you know, can, uh, write few things in the chat box that uh, you know we want to develop so what are the most essential things to be the part of this development maybe one or two words one or two sentences you can write yes punishwari ji Bhuneshwariji, you need to unmute yourself. Microphone is muted. Bhuneshwariji, you have mic. You may unmute yourself. Hello? Yes. Yes, Bhuvaneshwariji, please go ahead. Uh, it's actually exactly this, uh, right? Because whenever uh, we are in the, we follow some uh, the rules and regulation, um, whatever it may, it may be in the working place, we follow the obedience and the self-discipline and self-confidence existing. And suppose if you are getting a second thought, and, and uh, actually we are unable to do some argument or uh, we are unable to tell about our opinion. So in that case, um, we can see some of them, uh, the domination, in getting the environment of the domination. I'm just talking about the working place environment. Yeah, very nice observation. It's that, that though we want to live with the feeling of relationship, but we are not able to live with that feeling of relationship. So that's the reason, you know, the environment of domination is there. Yes. Sir. And uh, I mean, start looking into, uh, you know, whether it's a family or whether it's an educational institutes, are we really able to, you know, have that environment, environment of relationship? So thank you for that. Thank Shishi you. Kanbiya. Uh, um, namaste, Bhaiya. Uh, namaste, Bhaiya. So, uh, what I was thinking about is, uh, it, it doesn't look uh, mutually exclusive. I mean, in majority of the cases I have seen, uh, not only me, but many people having a different uh, style of uh, relationship uh, or domination at workplace, within their family, and within the society. And um, many a times, this is also a big problem that uh, we cannot have a single uh, theory which can be adopted for uh, treating the society at large. Uh, thank you, Vaya. This was one of the uh, thoughts which came into my mind. Right. Thank you. We'll take uh, 
वन मोर फ्रॉम सत्य शिला जी नमस्ते भैया होप यूर डूइंग गुड so uh, listening to uh, this and also from uh, the last few days I felt that uh, and one of the question that you put forth for development I think that uh, the more I would uh, what I want from myself is maybe a little more clarity about myself so uh, we all think we understand ourselves uh, and we always start judging other people but I think that I myself am not completely understanding what I want so by listening to all these sessions uh, a little more understanding of self has come about and uh, this is helping me to understand a little more about others uh, whether be it a relationship or respect reverence or gratitude uh, a lot of revelations have come about for me during these uh, sessions so uh, a little cl more clarity has come about about myself and because of that obviously uh, we relate everything uh, in relation with others also so i think there is more clarity for me uh, about other people about without judging what is happening in the world or uh, uh, so I, I feel this has little opened up the avenues in thought so the exploration is uh, going a little more deeper i think uh, instead of thinking about others or anything else first i want to understand more about myself right now uh, so i think if i am very clear on what i want what i do why i react why i respond what I'm doing in each and every situation, I think that will re lead to my development. And in because we are a social species, so it is a very, uh, you know, we are in relation with so many people. So if I do something, I think that will reflect on others, and so on for everybody. So then, uh, yeah, if each person thinks about the clarity in themselves, this will lead to a more unified and understanding uh, society. So this is, and obviously the domination part that will the shashan, shasan and all this might go down and the relationship, if we have a good relationship with ourselves, I think that will reflect on others also. This is what I feel. I'm, I'm still thinking on those lines right now. So I suddenly when you were speaking, this is what came to my mind. And I thought, yes, this is thank good you. for me, I felt. So thank, thank you so you. much for your reflections. Today. Thank you, Didi. Thank you. So, a brief conclusion of whatever we discussed uh, till now. I mean, looking at the inputs, where are we today, is on the right side of the screen. Where we want to be is on the left side of the screen. The screen is divided into two. So, what is required for that and how we can you know, reach to the desirable state is through uh, imparting human education by becoming a part of human education because that education is the most important thing and how it can be done you know satyashila this input is based on the same thing through self exploration and self verification so this these things are required basically to transform society so that societal transformation is possible with the human education. So through human education, I get transformed within myself and you know, I can be the part of the societal transformation because to transform the society essentially required is I need to transform. So with that transformation, you know, I can multiply myself, multiplication of my understanding and my feelings in the students and the children and the people around. The, so the first dimension, education and sanskar, will you know, meet out the need of right understanding and right feelings. Now, when we see the prosperity, you know, so the self-regulation and the health, plus a part of preservation, would lead to the prosperity. So we had talked about self-regulation is the feeling of responsibility for nurturing protection and the right utilization of the body. And the health is body acts according to self and the parts of the body in harmony. 
so for that you know this is a program the program to ensure the self regulation intake and daily routine are the most important thing along with the labor and exercise the postures to regulate internal and the external organs of the body so if we are able to follow this 1 2 and 3 you know rigorously religiously then the dependency on the four minimizes but you know body is a material and material has got impact on you know environment other material too so there is possibility of infections there is possibility of some uh, temporary disharmony in the body in that case this medicines but the medicines you know basically when we look into the medicines whether these medicines are available in the drug store naturopathy or ayurvedic medicines or allopathic medicines these medicines are basically some physiochemical things so they are the part of the nature so nature is providing all those kind of things if you look at look into the vegetables if you look into the fruits if you look into all the spices we use in the kitchen so though you know they are also medicine and then along with that medicine if it's not working out then the treatment you know, some special uh, surgery or the special treatment and the need of the physical facility is to ensure this uh, program of self regulation so when you when we think upon the systems for the health uh the self regulation is at various level so what i can do at an individual level i can check my lifestyle means my which which, which means my intake and routine and that labor that exercise right. at the level of family you know this intake what sort of intake we are making what are we preparing what do we eat in the breakfast lunch and dinner what are the things we eat mostly what are the things we do not we you know avoid eating and the daily routine of the family now when it comes to the family cluster so all together you know like five six family 10 family together can work on this postures the sitting posture standing posture sleeping posture because there are always i mean if you start interacting with the people around you then you will find that at least one person in the 10 family has little idea about the postures has little idea about regulation of breath so in the family cluster we can think about it we can start doing it at the level of village we can work on medicines so what are the medicines which are you know which can ensure this temporary disharmony without creating so much of side effect on the body at the level of village cluster of the city so this health education so understanding self understanding the need of the self understanding body you know health edu education on ensuring this self regulation at creating environment the labor and treatment at the level of you know nation the proliferation of the good practices focusing on the health and at the level of world we can talk you know think about we can talk about human culture civilization and the tradition so the more research is required for the societal systems and dimensions so there is a whole lot of scope you know scope for our participation in ensuring the prosperity in the uh, society so we can think about it you know, and uh, through which you know we can participate into this dimension dimensions of prosperity any input based on this yes bhuneshwari ji bhuneshwari ji sir yeah 
do you have any input to be shared? Mm. Okay, you are handing over. At the individual level and uh, at the individual level, we can follow some lifestyle and exercise, everything we can do with it. But the family level, uh, the intake, daily routine, is uh, following that is uh, somewhat uh, difficult. You know? We have to go for a practice because each one of uh, them have uh, various uh, thought and various uh, pace uh, for taking the intake. So that is uh, somewhat uh, some difficult. The village level medicine. Yeah, at individual level, you're finding it okay and easy. Uh, How it is okay and easy at uh, you know, individual level, because you have understood few things. Yes. So at the family level, the same experiment can be done. So it so will that, take time. It will take time. Yeah. Yeah. When the transformation is effective. Yeah. You know, Bhuneshwari ji, we are talking about the transformation. Yes. Sir. You know, we are not talking about having some behavioral changes. So mm. it takes time. The transformation within myself is taking a whole lot of time. Yes, so it sir. takes time in transformation, but it's a gradual process. And for that, if that first thing is ensured nicely, yes. that right understanding and right feeling, then the rest are the natural outcome of it. Yes. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Sima Didi. Seema Patalji. Atul Dhaleji. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, Atulji, very clear. Hey, yeah, sir, uh, I want to know more about this village level and program is medicine. So can you elaborate this? Yeah, I mean, you know, these are the, the, uh, the uh, blocks and the steps, like individual, family, family cluster, village. So it's a responsibility of the village, which means it's a responsibility of the block. In the modern days, we can say it's a responsibility of that our ward, the corporation okay. ward, right, to yeah. ensure this proper understand these proper medicines and to keep these proper medicines available. So when it comes to the village cluster, let us say the all these, uh, you know, the, we say blocks of the, uh, cor you know, corporation wards. So let us say the five wards together working on creating awareness on the health education. So what is important is having this understanding of self-regulation. And with that self-regulation, uh, the people will be able to ensure the health of the body. And this health issue would minimize. Today, most of these health issues are because of the two nature, because of the two things. Number one, uh, that internal disharmony. And the number two, you know, we are not able to have this proper uh, lifestyle, exercise, intake. We are not able to follow this daily routine. So a whole lot of education is required. So the, it's a responsibility of the village cluster and city can be identified to have this health education. Right, we are, we, we, okay. we are, yes, yes. We are dealing with, you know, we are dealing the diseases, but we also need to deal with creating this understanding so that the diseases will minimize. The dependency on the medical, the dependency on the hospitals would minimize. And that can be with having a proper lifestyle exercise intake and delivery. Okay, thank you. Let us see. Okay, that means you mean to say that uh, village is at the ward level and uh, the village cluster may be at the uh, city level or district level so, so that we can start the program of health education and environment. Mm -hmm. I, am I correct? Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. 
थैंक यू डॉक्टर करुणा करण जी गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर इंडिविजुअल लेवल फैमिली लेवल वी कैन एबल टू रेगुलेट बाय सेल्फ और विद द कोऑपरेशन ऑफ फैमिली मेंबर्स बट इन द केस ऑफ नेशनल लेवल वी ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट बायोरिदम लूनर एंड द सोलर सिस्टम्स बट विद द चेंजिंग वर्किंग कल्चर uh with the introduction of uh, night time working um easy working that is uh, flexi timings and all so how we can able to accommodate and also in the present corporate culture uh, the working hours uh, are not limited to 6 uh, or 8 hours extended hours we need to work so that that's the clarification i want sir yeah i mean the moment we understand the need of physical facility is limited so we can also you know think about how many hours do i need to spend to you know, make this physical facility available for each one of us for ourselves for the family and this can be done through education so if we keep imparting the value education as a co explorer and placing these proposals of you know harmony to the students and simultaneously if we keep exploring within ourselves those proposals so that would help in the development of our understanding which reflects into our living and uh, the students who are sitting in our classroom today you know in the next 4 5 years they are going to be the part of the society so they will have this clarity so the things will change slowly but it has to start with this education okay sir it's a gradual improvement only but uh, some of the factors are non controllable that's the thing sir yeah every factor which is which has because of the human interventions and the behavior can be controlled managed or can be set right with the human education the factors which are not being created by the human being then you know we we need to understand whether that nature itself has a design of this harmony there are two different systems you know the one is man made systems and the other is nature's made systems so for example family is a man made things you know society is a man made things different institutions are the man made things the policy making decision making health uh, legal systems okay, education so you know these are all man made systems so we need to see that the trouble is there in the man made systems or the nature systems uh umesh ji yes uh, can we say that uh, the Uh, for health self regulation at individual level the program uh, is around lifestyle and exercise similarly at family level intake and daily routine at family cluster level postures and regulation of breath at the village level it is uh, medicine and at a village clusters or city treatment health education and at the lesser level the program should be proliferation of good practices so that it can proliferate and uh, uh, filtrate downwards to the individual level also and at the world level the program should be uh, the emphasis should be on human culture and uh, civilization and traditional practices uh, isn't it yeah it's it's you know percolating and proliferating through individual level ah right? through individual level through, yes through individual ah. levels because mm-hmm. whatever you know we say family family cluster village these are all individuals so every individual with this clarity of the self regulation would have this proper lifestyle and exercise now when it comes to the daily routine and intake yeah it's more of family things when it comes to the postures yeah out of this few the individuals of family you know few individuals living in the family cluster have more uh, expertise on this particular things so it's it's both way you know 
it's uh, percolating from individuals to the world and from world to the individuals. Is that okay? It's so okay. It's so okay, Omesi. Thank you. Yes, yes. Let us talk about the dimensions number three, the work and the production. Okay, what does it mean by work? So the work is basically the labor a human being does on the rest of the nature. And the outcome of the work is the physical facilities. Production is the production, the, the physical facility obtained out of work. So these two things are important, you know, the work and the production. So through work, we produce physical facility and the production is the physical facility obtained out of work. When we say the behavior, behavior is basically with the human being. And the returns of the behavior is right understanding and right feeling, the mutual happiness. So we in the classroom. Classroom is basically an example of the behavior and not the work. Work is with the rest of the nature. And the return of the work is physical facility for the mutual prosperity. For example, farming you know, is a type of work. So behavior and the work are the two different things. And when we say uh, you know, the work is the labor a human being does on the rest of the nature and the production, the physical facility obtained out of work. So both are important for us, the behavioral part also and the work part also. Work is our relationship with the rest of the nature. Behavior is our relationship with the human being. So dimension three is production and work, which contributes to prosperity and the coexistence in nature and existence. So physical facility obtained out of work and what is the need of physical facilities? Can anybody would like to say in one sentence only, why do you need a physical facility? Raise the hands. Yes, Umesh Chi. Umesh Kumar Tripathi Ji. Ji, yes, sir. Yeah. Physical facility is required for the nurturing, protecting, and right utilization of body. Very nice. So anything which, which we are producing and not contributing into nourishment of the body, protection of the body, and the right utilization of the body, then is that the right production? Let us go to the mall. Let us go to the market and just do this observational study that how many percentage of the goods which are there in the market, in the shops, in the mall falls under the category of required physical facility and falls under the category of non-required physical facilities. So do we really need to have, you know, produce those things which doesn't nurture the body? Just have a rough guess. Let us say 100 things are available in the market. Out of that 100 things, what you think? How many things falls under the category of required physical facility? Give your response in the chat. 100 things are available in the market. And how many things falls under the category of required? <laughs> <laughs> Very harsh, but that's fact, you know, four to five, 10, 20, very few. See, even in 2022, we are not able to decide upon what to produce. Now, what do you think that this is the issue of education or not? In fact, we are spending the whole system, the education system is spending 
so many years through the schools through the colleges and even after that you know 15 20 years of education if we are not able to understand that what to produce and if i go with this responses like 95% or more than 95% are basically doesn't falls under that category of required maybe it's a 10% i mean whatever the percentage is but at least large percentage of the production are not under the category of nurturing the body what do you think that this is not the concern for us this is not the issue because of the right education the human education so with this right education you know the students would be able to understand what to produce and with such sort of production we can lead to this prosperity and the coexistence because whatever you know extra things which we are producing which doesn't falls under the category of not required physical facility the raw material we get from the nature only so can you manufacture anything in your, in our manufacturing units without extracting or mining the things so if 95 percentage of of the goods which are there in the market doesn't falls under this category of required physical facility which means see that 95 percentage we have extracted the nature and we have just spoiled the nature isn't it so it's not only the 95 percentage of the goods which are available in the market near your place but in all the markets in the world dr a geeta ji dr a geeta ji seema patel ji uh, namaste bhaiya uh, namaste bhaiya uh, uh, understanding this uh, yes uh, uh, an entire shift is required in the whole uh, production system but how is this going to be possible the way things are uh, i mean uh, packaged foods they are increasing by the day then uh, even things like uh, you know uh, earlier like packaging and bulk was what used to be now you everything in the name of availability to all even in 5 rupee packets and then all those packets become waste material so we are in you know that consumerism has started how is it going to uh, stop uh, the question is that even if we understand this and also the uh, one question which is coming again and again like this is also providing employment to a lot of people so uh, although the profits are being amassed by a, a very small number of people but this is also providing employment uh, like corona times this has been seen that when most of the people return to the villages and everything uh, production level at a you know in a lot of places uh, they just fell and you know uh, you, uh, it is being the brunt is being faced by the people so, so is the society ready for this kind of a shift and what are the implications that are going to ha- happen we have to think of an alternative yes that thank is you. the concern thank you see the three uh, in uh, questions in the one question number one how it will happen and in the sharing you said that your mother in law were doing it <laughs> and, yeah. and you you started doing it right uh-huh. so it's very simple the moment we have this understanding that reflects into our behavior this is number one number two this you know employment yeah that's a big concern you know important issue but then why do i am into job i am into job to earn this physical facility and if i have this clarity that the physical facility can also be produced and not only acquire so we can be in the production 
you know, sir, uh, part of the physical facilities. Just 40 years ago, if you see some data, and even before 40 years, you know, a data of 100 years, 150 years, then you find that the people were self-employed. So employment was not an issue. Mm. The employment issue has started with the education because we connected education with the job. Job, true. Everyone wants white collar jobs. Sarkar yeah. Dinok. Yeah, everyone wants a job and we want the job to, you know, make this physical facility available. Mm. So, I mean, we can see that just 50 years ago, 60 years ago, this employment was not an issue because each one of the family or the individual were the self-employed. So they were supporting themselves and they were also supporting the existence of the society. Mm. So this assumption that money makes me happy, the assumption that the white scholar job is equal to the respect. So all these basic assumptions, you know, this preconditioning, we need to verify. And as we start verifying, you know, start doing the verification of this preconditioning, then we get this clarity. And that is the reason this right understanding and right feeling is the most important thing for the human being. So we can we can start developing within ourselves as a teacher so that you know we place these proposals to the students and we can be the part of this societal transformation through personal transformation. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Now let us move to the next dimension, uh, which is uh, justice and preservation. So justice directly contributes to the fearlessness in the society. And justice is basically having the trust ensured on each one of us. You know, the fear is the lack of trust. And the trust is the clarity that other also wants to live like me. They also wants to live in harmony. They also wants to make me happy. I also want to make them happy. This is the trust. And with this trust, you know, we discussed this feeling of relationship yesterday. So recognizations of human-human relationship, its fulfillment and evaluation leading to the mutual happiness is justice. And justice can be ensured by having these right feelings in every individual. Now, when we say, so what is required for a justice in a society at you know, each of these levels? So at the family level, accepting other family member with their current competency and having the clarity that each one of them has this full potential. The complementariness in the family. So the person with more competency is more responsible and helping other people to understand to develop this competency within. So such families and the collection of such families becomes a neighborhood. So such family can help each other in living and understanding. Anyway, today also we all are living. We are living at individual level, we living at family level, we are interacting with the neighbors, we are interacting in our neighborhood, we are interacting in our institutions, in our city, district. But with this clarity of having this right understanding and right, I mean, with this clarity that uh, relationships makes me happy. And I can give three things to the other. And I'm, I'm also having expectations of these three things from the other. And out of these three, the right understanding and right feelings. So that is what my continuous need and the continuous need of the other. So in our exchange, in our give and take, 
if the right understanding and right feelings becomes the core, it becomes at the center, then you know, slowly and gradually, we will keep taking steps towards this fearless society. So most important thing for that is developing within myself, having this clarity within myself. So let me see, is there any, I, I'm lowering you know, the hands which are being raised. So if any input or questions on justice, how to ensure justice in the society, you can raise your hands or any sharing. Yes, Jayanta Kumarji. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. May, may I audible to you? Yes, very clear and loud. Actually, you have told that in earlier time, there was no need of employment. Everybody is sufficient and there was the uh, harmony in the society. So should we can back to the previous, uh, means before 40 years. Can we, can we back to the before 40 years? Because there was no need of employment, there was harmony in the society. So can we back to that period? Yeah, I can say that there was harmony in the society, but what I did is basically uh, the families were self-sufficient. Yeah, yeah. And and so, the families were supporting. I mean, yeah. even the if, if the elder brother uh, or maybe just, you know, for example, the younger brother, any of these two brothers were not able to produce the physical facility. The others were supporting. Yes, Helping yes. Uh, really, that was a good period. So, so should we move to that? Can we conclude here that should we move to the uh, before 40 years uh, lifestyle? Yeah. Do you want to move or not? Now I want to move, but everybody should. <laughs> yes. uh, that's and it. I too. And I <laughs> yes. too. You know? but, but whole society should uh, uh, agree with this. Then yeah, only there will be no problem. Then, then there will be no problem. Yes, very nice. You know, each one of us wants to, you know, move. It's yeah. just a matter of understanding that I want to. And yeah, then yeah. only we'll be able to move. So this <laughs> yes, education sir. would help, you know, yeah. students to understand. Yeah. The purpose. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'll I'll okay. listen to Simaji later. Okay. Uh, just move moving further. So preservation is basically you know recognizations of the human and the rest of the nature's relationship. The fulfillment and the evaluation of human nature relationship, which leads to the mutual prosperity or mutual enrichment. So the preservations of the physical facility help us in being in the state of prosperity within and also enrichment and the production, protection and the right utilization of the rest of the nature. So let us say an example of the preservation, a very small example like if I have this wooden chair. So having a wooden chair is one thing, but number two, preserving that wooden chair, increasing the durability of that wooden chair. So for example, what is the purpose of the wooden chair? To be seated. No. So uh, let us say if one leg of that wooden chair has been broken, then do I need to throw that wooden chair out? Or can I you know, think of repairing that one leg of the wooden chair? So what are the physical facilities we have? We have these infrastructures, you know, the, the college buildings, the, our own homes. We have these physical facilities like clothes to protect the body, right? So I have this enough number of clothes to protect my body. So the durability, increasing the durability of the clothes by preserving it is a contribution towards the preservation of the nature too. Or if a new style of the cloth has come in the market and uh, you know whatever the clothes I have, but I go buying the new clothes, 
a similar thing is applicable to all these critical facets. So preservation is basically recognizing that I am related to nature and my lack of right understanding is contributing towards exploitation of the nature which I do not want to be. I want to be mutually fulfilling. So with that clarity, we remain in the state of prosperity and also contributes in the enrichment, protection, and the right utilization of the nature. So this is what the preservation means. So if any sharing or questions related to the preservation part, you can raise your hand. Yes, Dr. Deepa Nayarji. Yeah, good morning, sir. Yeah, actually, can we call this preservation as uh, that we are showing justice towards the future generations in the sense we can connect it with sustainability also along with the present needs. That way we can relate it to justice. Yeah, I mean, otherwise it may happen that uh, our grandfather, uh, sorry, our grandchildren may need this oxygen cylinder to carry every moment. And they may ask you a question you know grandmother when all these things were happening what you were doing right so that is that is very important thing so preservation is understanding that i am a part of the nature i am for the earth the earth is not for me so whatever the physical facility you know i have produced or i made this physical facility available for me it is my responsibility to preserve it. So by preserving physical facilities, by maintaining it, the proper maintenance, repairing, increasing the, the span, the durability of the physical facility, I am preserving the nature because every single physical facility get produced with nature only. Yes. Okay, Dipaji. Yeah, so that way exchange also, both of this four and five are most related to the sustainability aspects with respect to nature, our commitment towards nature. Correct, because they are, you know, related with the physical facilities. Yes. So Thank I you. Yeah, you need to unmute yourself, Dipaji. You're saying something. Yeah, one more question. Actually, when we... Uh, see those goals one to five education and sanskar it is related to the self health self-regulation related to self and body production work uh, yeah mostly related to uh, the goal three so that case also both uh, self and body so four and five can be connected in that manner so that case that also related with self and body so means the physical facility, yeah, related with both prosperity, yes. Yeah, so when we, you know, see these five dimensions and can do the categorization, that the dimensions related to having this transformation within, dimensions related to human-human relationships and the dimensions rela related to human and nature's relationship. So thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, let's move ahead and uh, talk about exchange and storage. So the exchange of what? Exchange of the physical facility with the view of mutual fulfillment and not with obsession for profit or exploitation. Now today when we see the selling price of the good and their operational cost, there's a huge gap because of the obsession for the profit. One of my friends, you know, he uh, works in on a very I mean, senior uh, management level at uh, a company which produces, uh, what do you say, this cold beverages. And uh, like he's, once I was talking to him and he said that, the operational cost of our you know, product is uh, just 20% of the selling price. 
80 percentage. Another example could be, you know, I come from Maharashtra in Aurangabad and uh, the onion hub of uh, India, Lasalgaon, you know, that Yavla region is very close from me, just 170 kilometers. And every year, you know, my, you know, my observations and observations of you all, you could also do it. Every year, when the onion prices reaches the maximum, you know, the most expensive, generally we say, you know, the prices are reaching to the sky. And that moment, when the onions are 80, 100, 120 rupees per kg in the market, during that same period of time, we see that the farmers are literally throwing their onions on the street because they have to prepare the field for the next you know, crop. And during that time, when the prices are touching the sky, the farmers can't afford to take these onions to the market because it needs transportation and you have to pay for that. And whatever the price the farmers gets during that time for their onion in the market is even can't make up their transportation cost. So the exchange you know, of the physical facility is with the view of mutual fulfillment. So when we have feeling of relationship towards each other, you know, with that feeling of relationship, we'll be able to see that I am producing something, the other is producing something, the one person is selling, the one person, you know, is, is uh, the, there are a lot of people who are busy in this total process from production to the selling to the you know, end customer. And if there is a feeling of relationship with each other, let us assume and think about it. You know, you're producing, let us say you're producing cons and your brother is not producing cons. And you are selling that cons, let us say 100 rupees kg, but your operation cost is, let us say 20 rupees. Even when you are converting into rupees, it's 20. Will you sell the corn to your brother at 100 rupees? 20 rupees, or you will just exchange it with something. Your brother has a sugar, you have a corn. Think of it. So the exchange of physical facility with the view of mutual fulfillment, not with obsession for the profit. And the obsession for the profit is again with an example, you know, with an assumption that the profit makes me happy. The money makes me happy and the need of physical facilities are limited. So are we able to see that each of the things which is not happening the way it has to happen because of my own assumptions, because of our own assumptions? The storage of physical facility with the view of mutual fulfillment, and again, not with the obsession for the profit or accumulation. I shared that examples of the onions. So hoarding part or the storage is not, you know, I store the things and I create a sort of an artificial, uh, this need in the market. And I uh, sort of create this, uh, you know, artificial things in the market. Actually, the production is there. It is there in the storage. I'm just holding it because waiting to get this uh, price high. So that is the you know, obsession with the profit or for the accumulation. So exchange and storage with mutual fulfillment. So generally, when we talk about economics, you know, these are the three different economics we talk. Number one, second, take. So domination, exploitation, maximization of the profit. So what do you think that this take and take? Even in the pandemic, we 
have seen it. Right? Even such sort of situations, even calamities, we have seen it. When there was a big flood at many places, or the area, you know, had a, a severe cyclone. Water is such a basic need to nurture the body. And a bottle of 10 rupees being sold, 100 rupees, even in those, you know, those kind of situations. So whether it's a pandemic, whether it's a you know, natural calamity. So this take and take e economy is basically at the base of it, there is just an opposition. The relationship is completely missing out. The only object is profit maximization. So the needs are not identified. Needs are considered as unlimited with an assumption that the resources are limited. And everyone is bound to be deprived. So the one who is, you know, having this maximization of the profit and accumulating more and more, they also feels deprived. And the one who is not able to accumulate, they, they also feels deprived. There is another economics, the economics of give and take. So the feeling is indifferent or opposition again. Right, you give me something, then only you know I will be give you something. If you are giving me at this particular cost, I would also give you at this particular cost. If you say namaste to me, I will say namaste to you. While you know saying namaste, if your feelings are there, then I will also try to ensure the feelings of feeling there. If you invite me, I will invite you. This is give and take, but still there is opposition. The third is the economics of give and give. So the give and give economics, which means both work for the mutual fulfillment and enrichment. This is based on the feelings of relationship. So the, the need of the physical facility is identified on the basis of right understanding. And the needs are definite. They are limited and limited. Limited <coughs> in, in time. So they produce more than what is required by cyclic and mutually fulfilling process. So the nature has a natural process of producing the things. So by understanding that process, uh, which means the eco-friendly and the human-friendly process, and sharing more in relationship. So we can see that the resources are more than required and every family can be prosperous. So what do you think that out of these three, you know, schools of economy, the take and take, give and take, or give and give, which one is naturally acceptable to you? Do we have a poll here? Yeah. Yes, so Minuji has responded because she has a background of economics immediately, give and give. So yes, Minuji, now we have to work on give and give economics. If we work on give and give for economics and if it becomes the part of you know the curriculum, then the students would have that understanding of give and give economy. And that economy would help the study of give and give economy would help them to develop this sanskar. And with that sanskar, you know, they will participate in ensuring the harmony in the society. Yeah, so what is basically, you know, the fundamental things the foundational thing is this right understanding and right feelings, which can be ensured through education. And we all are the part of education. So we are the syllabus maker. 
we are teaching our core subjects. And we can see that how many content of our core subjects is matching with the harmony and how many content of the core subjects are not matching with the harmony. So slowly and gradually, you know, we can do the revision in the syllabus. So value education plus value-based education would help us to transform within ourselves and to be the part of the societal transformation. And if you look into the scope of the system, when you see from family order to the family cluster order, so family order is, let's say, 10 families, family cluster, let us say, you know, the family cluster order, which means the 10 family orders. So village order is 10 such family cluster together. So from one to the, from family order to the world family is 10 power 10, which means 1000. And uh, let us do a very rough calculation that if I invest myself in understanding this, uh, developing this right understanding and right feeling within myself and takes, uh, let us say 10 years for me. And in the next 10 years, I could be the help of another 10 people only than in 100 years, you know, 1000 crore people. And I guess, you know, that is uh, fair enough as you see the long history of the human being, 100 years, is, 100 years is nothing. So my participation in the society, because that is what my value is there. So ensuring happiness in the family, by the way of helping development of right understanding and right feelings. Ensuring the health in the family, uh, by the way of systems of nurturing, protection, and the right utilization of the body of every family member. Ensuring prosperity in the family by the way of helping family recognizing the need of physical facility, its production, its preservation, and its right utilization. Facilitating one or more members of the family to participate in the larger society in one or more dimensions of the human order. And in the larger society, my participation in all these dimensions we talk about or in some of the dimensions we talked about. So even our professions is basically the participation of human being in one or more of the dimensions of the societal systems. Let's say by profession, we are teacher. So each one of us can participate in the, the first and most important is ensuring right understanding and right feelings. So we may choose our participations wherever we, you know, we have our competency and development and, and the interests and the skills. So with the feeling of purpose of relatedness, our professions will be interrelated and in a manner that everyone is able to participate meaningfully and of mutual fulfillment. It includes teachers, farmers, carpenters, doctors, and so on. So let us think today that are you willing and are you ready to participate in the societal transformation through personal transformation? And uh, let us also you know, have a thought today out of these five dimensions, which are, which are the dimensions I could, what are my interests and what are my current skills and the competency. So to sum up whatever we discuss, a society is a composed of family living together, in a mutually fulfillment manner. And for that, the common goal is of right understanding and right feeling in every individual, prosperity in family, fearlessness in the society, and the coexistence of nature and existence. And for that, all we need to do is identifying our own competency, skills, interest to participate into these five dimensions or one of these five dimensions. So the questions generally you know, comes in this session is at what right age the value education should start? So very brief answers I'm expecting because the time constraint is there. Lowering down all the hands. Possibility, you know, you wanted to share something. Yes, Sandhya Saveji, if this is a question, at what age, what is the right age 
Namaste, Umesh sir. Uh, Namaste. Actually, I wanted, uh, I had one doubt. Uh, is it okay if I ask? Yeah, we'll take doubt later. It's already 12.45 and I was supposed to complete the session at 12.45. Okay, fine, yes. sir. I will ask. Thank you. you. Yes, okay. thank you. Thank you. So these are some of the frequently asked questions we are during these sessions, like, uh, for example, what is the right age to start value education? Um, I am asking because children don't have the capacity to think so deeply and to evaluate all these proposals. Uh, the second type of questions at one point of time, you know, we were living peacefully in the country and then uh, you know, were invaded from the outside the country and we got enslaved. So even if you know, we are able to make some program uh, effective, what is the guarantee that uh, this, this will not happen again? The third sort of questions comes in this session is there are so many problems in the society and our efforts will take long time to make an uh, impact in the society. Don't you think that uh, you know, a revolution is required? So you can think about this uh, you know, questions and have your answer ready for your own self. Uh, the timing is already extended, so let's go for the quiz. <laughs> 